LDL, triglycerides, HDL. Hey, I just finished work. Are we still going out for drinks tonight? Yeah, yeah, I just got my recent cholesterol lipid panel results and trying to figure out what they mean. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see you there uh, in a little bit. Okay, man, but don't be too long. Uh-huh, yeah, love you too. Whatever. Jeremy. Jeremy. Jeremy! What? Have you been here all night? Yes, Steve. I've been here all night trying to figure out how my cholesterol and triglycerides are. Well, how are they? I have no f***ing idea. Hey everybody, your old pals, Steve Edelman, Jeremy Pettis here. We're gonna talk about the cholesterol panel. As we showed in the opening, it can be really confusing. And we're gonna highlight the forgotten part of the cholesterol panel, the triglycerides. What do those mean? So real quick, when you look at this, you'll get your total cholesterol. It's really irrelevant because your total cholesterol is made out of your LDL and HDL. What are those? LDL, I like to think of L for low. You want that as low as possible. Yep. If you have diabetes, you want that less than 70. If you have diabetes plus heart disease, less than 55. So generally taking a statin, something, some kind of medication to lower your LDL is critical. Your HDL, H for high, you want that as high as possible. That's the good cholesterol. That's largely genetic. And I just learned about a new statement or a new saying you have about HDL. Mother nature has HDL by the balls. Yeah, so basically it is what it is. It comes from your mom and dad. And if you have parents that lived in their 90s, hundreds, bet they had a high HDL. So you can treat the LDL with, with statins. HDL, thank mom and dad for. Then you got this <laughs> number called triglycerides. So Steve, what are triglycerides? Very simply, triglycerides are a form of fat in the bloodstream. Okay, and why do we care about them? Yeah, two, two major areas. If they get too high, you can cause inflammation of your pancreas and have a serious condition called pancreatitis, and it can build up in your arteries and cause heart attacks and strokes. But these, when their levels get consistently above 500, we'll get to those. Yeah, and who should worry about this? Yeah especially people with type 2 diabetes, especially, and those that have the metabolic syndrome, which is a group of cardiovascular risk factors that people with type 2 diabetes commonly have, and also when it runs in the family, familial and even more rare genetic conditions. Okay, so I'm staring at my report. I see this triglyceride number there. What is, what am I aiming for? When do I be concerned? Yeah, normal levels less than 150. Up to 200 is livable, but you might want to start thinking about improving your diet. 200 to 350, you're getting a little bit higher, but when you get above 500, that's the cutoff that us doctors look at for at risk for pancreatitis. Mm -hmm. And that's, once again, a serious condition. Yeah. So we'll talk about medications in a little bit, specifically for triglycerides, but our first step, no matter what, when it comes to high triglycerides is, is lifestyle interventions. And what does that mean? Well, it's exercise, it's weight maintenance, and importantly, diet. So a lot of questions come up. What kinds of fat should I be eating? High carb, low carb, all of that. So to help us guide us through that, and specifically Steve, because he has a terrible diet, we're gonna have him sit down with our uh, resident expert uh, dietitian, Adriana, in our kitchen here to give him some dietary tips. So let's go do that now. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, we're in the TCOID kitchen. We're here with Adriana Valencia, who's the ultimate dietitian. And let's get into it. How do we lower our triglyceride levels? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, the good thing to note is there's only a couple things you really have to focus on. So there's four key components when you talk about how to lower triglycerides. One being the type of fat that we're consuming, right? So an easy place to look at that would be in your cooking oils. We really want to try to steer more towards heart healthy fats, something like avocado or olive, right? So you want to look at the type of fat that you're eating in your diet. Another component is going to be the carbohydrates. All of you are carb experts, right? You don't want to cut carbs out of your diet completely. What that can lead to is an excess amount consumption of things that are high in fat or a lot of protein that we don't necessarily need. So you still want to have carbs in your diet, 
but you really want to look at taking out a lot of like the products that are like the white breads and the white pasta. Um, you want to try to look at more whole grain sources, right? So switching from white to brown rice can be a pretty easy swap. You could even try doing like a half half mix if you're not totally sold on the brown rice. So no more wonder bread. No, <laughs> every so often, right? Everything in moderation, but really you want to look at changing over some of those refined carbohydrate products to those whole wheat, whole grain products that are going to be good for your heart and help you get the triglyceride level down. So we have, we want to look at fats. We want to look at the types of carbs we're consuming. And when it comes to protein, right, which we all know is an important part of the diet, you want to look at the type that you're consuming. Are you doing a lot of things that are high in fat, like a lot of the red meat or processed like sausages or lunch meat? Then you want to work on cutting that down, right? If I'm eating red meat five days a week, I can work on doing that three days a week and then using turkey or chicken or tofu or a leaner source of protein to substitute that. Sounds good. Easy, right? Yeah. And then the other part is going to be alcohol alcohol, you really want to work on moderating the amount that you're consuming, which can be hard sometimes, right? What are the recommendations? So the recommendations for alcohol are just to reduce the amount that you're currently consuming. But so, cause it's going to depend on how high your triglyceride level is to start out with. Um, but really if you're somebody who drinks four days a week, you can try to work on doing that two days a week. If all that information feels like a lot, you can go ahead and look into a Mediterranean style diet. There's tons of research, tons of books you can look into. Mediterranean style is really lean proteins, healthy types of carbs, and it's really going to steer you the right direction there. So what about exercise? Yeah, with exercise, you want to try to get at least 30 minutes most days to all days of the week. And if you're somebody who you think, oh my gosh, 30 minutes is a lot, start slow, right? Go from not doing anything to 10 minutes, working your way up to those 30 minutes. But exercise has tons of benefits, so just start slow and work your way towards that at least 30 minute goal. Common sense. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thanks Appreciate for having me. It. It's yeah. good to be here. All right, so we're back. Steve tells me he's never going to have another sip of alcohol ever. Uh, good to know. <laughs> so in addition to uh, lifestyle stuff, some treatment options for high triglycerides. So the good news is that our main treatments are things that are good for your health anyways. So getting your weight down to, you know, kind of your ideal weight. Obviously, people struggle with that. Diet, exercise, medications can help with that. Getting your blood sugars in check. Getting that A1C below seven. When your blood sugars come down, your triglycerides come down also. And then if you are on a statin already for your LDL, make sure you're on a maximum dose because that also brings down your triglycerides. So you wanna kind of maximize these things in your normal kind of health maintenance role. But if that's not cutting it, your triglycerides are still above goal. What kind of options do people have? Yeah, I think the classic group of drugs called the fibrates and the, the first one that really made it popular was Jim Fibrazil. And that's a medication that specifically lowers triglycerides and raises the HDL at the same time. And we also have phenofibrate as well. Yeah. Old medications, generic, very affordable. Also fish oil. And a comment here because this is important. Fish oil will bring down your triglycerides, but at, at, at high doses. So to get an effect from what you get at CVS, you'd probably need to take three or four of those horse pills <laughs> three times a day, um, and that's hard to do. If you're just taking like one in the morning, you're really not doing anything for yourself other than just giving yourself bad breath, literally. You smell like fish. Uh, but thankfully, there is actually an FDA-approved fish oil drug now that's, that's a, a reasonable pill from one pill. So sometimes people like that because it's more of a natural way to treat triglycerides. So you got these fibrates, you got fish oils, and then we have a new class of medication that's for a very, you know, much more extreme form of triglycerides that people inherit from their families where they can have triglyceride levels of 10, 20, 30,000. Yeah, yeah. They're getting pancreatitis all the time, things like that. There's a drug that is actually called olisarsin. It was a tremendous advance in the field because they saw in these patients, it lowered their incidence of pancreatitis and their levels of triglyceride. So once again, it's really for an extreme rare form, but you never know, they, they may widen the indication. Yeah. So this is all to say, I hope this has provided some clarity on this cholesterol profiles. Keep an eye on the LDL. Again, call mom and dad about the HDL. If your triglycerides are over 500, you got to do something yeah, about it. Yeah. Start with the lifestyle. Think about these medications, but absolutely talk to your provider about it. We hope that you found this enjoying, uh, enjoyable. Click the like, uh, send this to a friend, follow us online. All those things actually matter to us uh, greatly. So appreciate your viewership and we'll see you on the next one. Send us questions too. <laughs>